This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com mm. So about uh, two and a half weeks till Rosh Hashanah. So I want to speak about an interesting phenomenon that we encounter uh, regarding Rosh Hashanah, regarding specific words that are utilized in Tanakh in reference to Rosh Hashanah. There's an interesting Medrash. The Medrash tells us when Adam Arishain ate from the Yitz Hadas, so now the Rebbe Shalom is concerned, perhaps now he'll eat from the Yitz HaChayim. So the Pasuk says, V'yata pen yishlach yadai. And now, lest he send forth his hand. So that's what the Rebbe Shalom is worried. V'yata pen yishlach yadai. Now, perhaps Adam Arishain will send forth his hand. Amar Rab Abba Bar Kahana, Melamed shepasach lei HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Pesach shel tshuva. Now that the Pasuk says, Viata, now that Adam Arishon may send forth his hand, the word Viata teaches us that the Adam Arishon had the opportunity to do tshuva. How do we know this? Where does it say tshuva in the Pasuk? Viata, and now, Ein Viata Elo tshuva. The word Viata means tshuva. How do I know? Shenema Viata Yisrael Ma Hashem Aleikecha Shoyel Me'imach Kiim Lira. So Adam Arishon eats from the Eitz Hadas, and Hashem says, and now I'm worried he might eat from the Eitz Hachayim. But because the, the Pasuk uses the word Viata, from here the Medrash derives that Adam Marishan had the opportunity to do tshuva. From where do we see this? From the word Viata. Frak the Chavetz Chaim in the Sefer Avas Chasad, in a footnote, where in the word Viata is there any remez, any allusion, any hint to tshuva? Since when does and now mean tshuva? doesn't mean tshuva. There's no reference to tshuva. There's no hint to tshuva. And yet the Medrash says, we know Adam Arishan had the opportunity to do tshuva because Rebbe Hashem says viata. We encounter a phenomenon in Tanakh and we're going to speak about it tonight in three ways. We're going to speak about it B'darach Musar, B'darach Machshava, and B'darach Said. And there are many, many approaches to this phenomenon, and you could, you could almost gla- gloss over it and miss it. But once you're aware of it, you'll see it, it hits you wherever you look. There's one specific word that the Tanakh consistently uses in reference to Rosh Hashanah. And you could sort of skip it and miss it. Sefer Eoiv. Let's go to Sefer Eoiv. Look at number four. Vayhi Hayoim, and it was the day. And the Malachim came to stand in judgment by the Rebani Shalom. And the Satan was among them. Okay, it was a day, it was the day. It was the day. Says Rashi, what's the day? Says Rashi, It was Rosh Hashanah. Now it doesn't say Rosh Hashanah. And we know that in Tanakh there are other names and appellations used for Rosh Hashanah. Yom Trua, Yom Azikaroin. And yet in Sefer Eoiv, all it says about Rosh Hashanah is one word. What word? Hayoim, the day. I mean, why, why do we call Rosh Hashanah Hayoim? There are a lot of days are the day. In fact, what does Hayoim mean? Hayoim means today. Technically, of all the 354 days in the lunar calendar and all the 365 days in the solar calendar, about all of those 700 or so days, you could call them Hayoim. Every day you wake up in the morning and you say Hayoim. Every day of Sphere of Hayoim, you say Hayoim. And yet, no. There is one day in the Jewish calendar that Tanakh just calls today Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is called today. So you say, come on, that's only one example. Let's pour it on. Look at number six. Vayi hayoyim, and it was the day. Vayavar Elisha, El Shunem. Elisha came to the city of Shunem. Visham Isha Gedoyla, there was a great woman there. Vatachasek boy, le'echolechem. She pressured him to eat by her. And whenever he would pass by, he would eat in that house. So the Pasuk says, Vayi hayoyim, it was today. What day was it? Says the Zayar HaKadosh, Oisai hayoyim, Rosh Hashanah haya. So again, another example, another illustration in Tanakh, that Rosh Hashanah, without any reference, it doesn't say the first day of the year, it doesn't say Echad Betishrei, it's just simply called Hayoim. Say so one another example. 
Here's another example. There's a Pasuk in Tehillim. This one is like, Begeder Ruach HaKodesh. Listen to this Remez. The Pasuk says in, in Tehillim, Parak Kuf Yotas, Lemishpatecha Amdu Hayoim, in your judgment they stand today, Ki HaKoyel Avodecha. Because everyone is your servant. So the Pasuk is saying, that, there, that, that Klal Yisrael stand in judgment on what day? Hayoim! Comes of Yosef Chaim Zonnefeld. He says if you count up the numerical value of the entire Pasuk, of all six words in this Pasuk, the gematria of the entire Pasuk is 861. Gematria, Rosh Hashanah. You know, you know gematria is with words. The gematria of the whole Pasuk, in your judgment, they stand Hayoim ki hakoyel avadecha is gematria Rosh Hashanah. Furthermore, the Pasuk in Vayera, Vayikra Avraham Shem HaMakoyim HaHu Hashem Yireh Asher Yeomer Hayoim Bahar Hashem Yireh says the Mar Shamesh, the Akedah took place on Rosh Hashanah. By the way, it's not unanimous that it took place on Rosh Hashanah. The, there are Midrashim that say the Akedah took place on Yom Kippur. And the Medrash Rabbah says the Akedah took place in Chodesh Nisan. So it's not even unanimous that the Akedah took place on Rosh Hashanah, which is a big question because the main theme of Rosh Hashanah is the Akedah. That's why we use an Shefra uh, Vanayil. That's why we do Tashlech. According to many, that's why we do Kaparos. It's all Zechel Akedah. We say, Akedah, Yitzchak, Lazar, Yim, Rachem, Tiskar. Why in the world are we making such a big deal about the Akedah on Rosh Hashanah if according to so many Midrashim it didn't happen on Rosh Hashanah? That's a separate question for another time. But says the Mar of Hashemesh, Abraham Avinu is mispalel, that through the Akedah, Hashem should sweeten all the dinim. When? On what day? Hayoim, on Rosh Hashanah. How do we know Rosh Hashanah? Behar. Behar is Rosh Hashanah. Be Rosh Hashanah. What day is Rosh Hashanah? Hayoim. So the beginning of Yoiv, Sefer Malachim, Sefer Tehillim, Parshas Vayera. What do we refer to Rosh Hashanah? Hayoim, 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 Hayoim. Is there any wonder then that Tosis writes in Masech the Megillah that the parsha that we read every single year immediately prior to Rosh Hashanah is Atem Nitzavim Hayoim Kulachem Lefnei Hashem Elokeh. Is there any better pasuk that could sum up and capture what happens on Rosh Hashanah? Then Atem Nitzavim Hayoim Kulchem Lefnei Hashem Lekechem. You stand Hayoim on Rosh Hashanah before the Rebbeinu Shlom. So the question we have to ask is, why specifically refer to Rosh Hashanah as Hayoim? We could refer to any day in the Jewish calendar as Hayoim. Every single day you wake up in the morning, it is today. No day that you wake up is tomorrow. You've never woken up on a day, and that day was the next day. It's always today. So you could refer to every single day. What's today? Hayoim! Hayoim Yom Rishon B'Shabbos, Hayoim Yom Sheni B'Shabbos, Hayoim Yom Shlisha. We say it every single day, Hayoim. No! There's only one day that the Tanakh consistently calls Hayoim Rosh Hashanah. Here's the first approach. Comes Ram Chalam, Masil Sesharim, and he says, Dvarim Pshutim Admaoid. Very simple words. He says, We see so many people. who slacken off in Avedas Hashem. And probably, we could all say about ourselves, we're one of them. We all are Misrashel, to some extent. Why? Why are there people who are Misrashel in Avedas Hashem? So the Sisham says, is it because a person doesn't know what their obligation in this world is? You ask the person, Rabbi Yid, did the Rivan Shem create you for Olam Hazeh, to eat, to drink, to make money? Or did the Rivan Shem create you for Olam Abba? Everybody knows. Olam Hazeh, Doi Melifroi, Zerbifnei Nobody's going to answer, Rivan Shem created me for Olam Hazeh. Rabbi Yid, you know, Shachar starts at 7 o'clock, 7.30, 8 o'clock. Why are you not there 10 minutes before? Why do you come even a minute late, 10 minutes before? Why? Is it that you feel you hold Shachris is not important? Is it that you hold the Etzem, you should come late? 
Do you think the Yibam Shem wants you to? No, Avada, the most important thing is to come on time, to come early. So Rabbi, why do you come late? The Mesil Shisham is asking a very simple question. Why are we Misrasha and Avayda Sashem? And he says, it's not that we don't believe what the importance of this world is. It's not that we don't believe that Hashem created us for Olam Haba. There's one simple reason. Laziness. Laziness. We're lazy. The alarm rings, and it's just hard to get out of bed. We're in the middle of eating, and it's just more comfortable to sit there and continue than to schlep ourselves out of the chair and go to the base medrash. We want to dive in the kavana, but it's much easier to let our mind wander than to harness it and to focus it. We know what we have to do. Nobody needs to tell anybody what they need to do. It's just a matter of doing it. Look at the words of Masil Sisharim in number 13. And we see so many times. Where a person wholeheartedly knows their obligation. And it is clear to a person what they need to do. And even so, we don't do it. Why don't we do it? Not out of lack of recognition what we need to do. Because we're just simply lazy. We say, I just want to eat a little bit more. Ishan Kima will press snooze one more time. Kasha Allah, it's too cold, it's too hot, I'm too tired, my throat is too dry, my head hurts a little bit, I'm going to wait until Rosh Hashanah. You know, yes, Rosh Chodesh Elul, Rosh Chodesh Elul. You know, I, I had in mind I was going to start learning more Rosh Chodesh Elul. But you know, which day, I'll do it, I'll start the second day Rosh Chodesh. Because the first day Rosh Chodesh is still Av, I'll start the second day Rosh Chodesh. The second day comes, but you know, I missed the first day, so I'm going to start Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah is a new beginning. Now nah, Rosh Hashanah... You know, I got caught up the second I made a mistake on Rosh Hashanah. Yom Kippur is going to be a new slate. Now, Yom Kippur is a Meira. I'm going to start. Sukkis is Tshuva Me'ava. No, the Bnei Yisachar says you can still do Tshuva until Chanukah. Tu B'Shvat. There's a Medrash that says Gula is going to happen on Tu B'Shvat. No, Purim. Purim is Menahapicha. I'm going to turn myself around. No, Rabbi Shua holds Benisa Nivra Ha'olam. <laughs> Rabbi Yeshaya was your site. That's when I'm going to start. I'm going to start Rabbi Shaila's yard site. I'm going to get free coffee on 7 Eleven. I'm going to start Rabbi Shaila's. Shavuos is Man Matan Torah. It's almost the three weeks. Tish above Noilad Mashiach. It's almost Rosh Chayla Shalom. After tax season, after the chasana, after my kids get out of the house, after I become a great great grandfather, that's when I'm going to start. And in the meantime, we just push off, push off, push off. Avada, nobody ever sat at a drush and said, no, the Rav doesn't know what he's talking about, the Baldash doesn't know what he's talking about, the Sefer doesn't... Everybody knows what the truth is, it's just a matter of simple laziness. <coughs> Says the Chafetz Chaim, the main mania in Avoida Hashem is good old-fashioned laziness. If you look on page 2 on the second line, The truth is when we think about this, The main thing that keeps us from doing what we need to do is just plain pro- procrastination. And in the interim, we don't daven, we don't learn, and our neshamas are bereft of all the goods that we need to bring up to Olam Abba. And therefore, says the Chafetz Chaim in a footnote on the Avas Chesed, when a Jew needs to do tshuva, he doesn't need to know what to do. We know what to do. When a Jew needs to do tshuva, he needs to know when to do it. What is tshuva? Tshuva is not what. Tshuva is when. And you know what the answer to the when is? Now, tshuva is one word, viata. Now, I'll start January first when the new cycle of that Yomi. Why should I start on the end of Bechayros? I'll start January first. No, I'll start Dafa Shavu is starting a new cycle in forty-seven years. I'll start then. Mishnah I, I never learned the whole Mishnah 
they're starting Chilak Hei, Chav Vav Elul. When they get up to Chilak Aleph, I'll start. And in the meantime, everything is lost, all Taira, all Yira, all Tefillah. Tshuva is not what? Tshuva is viata and now. The word viata means tshuva. <clears throat> Says the Chafetz Chaim, the truth is, the word viata is the most powerful word in Kala Kula. It is a word that we can ask ourselves every single moment of the day, from the moment you wake up until you go to sleep. You wake up in the morning. Does Hashem want me to check my messages? Or does Hashem want me to daven first? Now, what does the Yibam Shem want me to do right now? To daven, to daven. And after daven, what does Yibam Shem want me to do right now? L'chachila, simen kufnon hei, you should learn at least a davar echad right after tefillah. And after that, what does Yibam Shem want me to do right now? Eat breakfast. The Gemara says, Yud Gimel Dvarim, Nemru B'Pashachris. No wonder people are so miserable. The Gemara says that if you don't eat bread in the morning, you're in a bad mood the whole day. So, what, so we live in a culture where people just drink coffee until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. No wonder people. The Gemara says, Pashachris is Mavatel Sina, is Mavatel Harurim Royim. The Maram Shif, Mesech Techulim, has very interesting kasha. Maram Shif says, he has a stira. Why uh, this week's parsha? So uh, what, what do they do wrong? So the pasuk said they didn't bring us bread. Elsewhere it says they got the benois moyav to be mezana with kal yisrael. So the maram shiv says they're both true because we didn't have pashachris, we didn't have breakfast. So it wasn't mevatel harurim raim. But maybe when they presented us with these uh, taiva, we succumbed. If we would have had a normal breakfast instead of a cup of coffee, we wouldn't have succumbed to the benois moyav. So if you came here tonight just to learn, you need to eat breakfast, it's Kadai. <clears throat> and after that, you got, you got to make a living. And after that, it's a question we can ask ourselves every moment of the day. Viata, what does Rebam Shem want me to do now, right now? Not tomorrow, not yesterday, not in an hour, right now. You know who had this midah of now, of Hayoim today? Bayaz. Nami tells Rus. Rus is all worried. Rus says, I don't know what he's going to do. I went to the field. I told him that I'm an Amana. I told him there's a possibility to do, be Mekai in the Mitzvah of Yibum. Is he going to marry me? Is he not going to marry me? So Nami tells Rus, don't worry. Relax. Sit. Until you know. He will not rest on his laurels until he settles the matter today. I know about Boaz that he's not a man of tomorrow. He's a man of today. He will let you know other yad or nisht whether he's going to marry you today. And it's a good thing he did. Because what if he would have said, I'm going to wait till Hanukkah because the Bnei Sashra says you could do tshuva till Hanukkah. Or what if he would have waited to Rabbi Shaila's yard site? Or what if he would have waited till Shavuos? Or what if he would have waited till after tax season? Or until the, you could go to hat box and get one hat and the other one you get half off? What if he would have said, you know, the chasna holes are cheaper next Tuesday? We know that the night that Boyaz married Rus, he dropped dead. Immediately after the chasna, Boyaz died. But that night, Oyved was conceived who gave birth to Yishai, who had David. And if Bayez would have waited one day, we'd be in this Gullus forever. Says Rus, I know about this man. This is a man, he doesn't procrastinate, and it's a good thing he didn't, because if he would have, we would have been in very big trouble. But there is an entity, and there is a nation, that every single time in Tanakh they are mentioned, there's another word that is juxtaposed to this nation. Whenever we mention this people, we always say the word Machar. Vayoymer Moshe Yeshua b'chalonu anoshim v'tzei hilochem ba'amolek Machar! Go out and battle Amolek! Machar anoichi nitzav! How do you read the Pasuk? Tzei hilochem ba'amolek Machar! Umachar, umachar, anoichi nitzav. The Gemara says this is one of the psukim she'in lo hechra. We don't know how to read it. 
In Shmuel, it says, David hit, smote Amalek, Every time Amalek is mentioned in the Torah, you could bet your bottom dollar that in that very Pasuk you're going to find the word Machar. And that is because the Midah of Amalek, of the Yetzirah, of the Satan, is Machar. Yetzirah says, Avada, Daf Yoimi, Mishnabrura Yoimi, Chafetz Chaim Yoimi, Daf Hashavua, Musar Yoimi, learning, it's all good, but today is not a good day to start. It's not a good day to start today. It's the end of Elul, it's the, the world was created in Nisan, it's Machalik, is Tanoim, you don't start things in Tishrei, you start things in Nisan. You start things during the three weeks. You start things Rosh Chodesh Elul. But you don't start things today. You never do anything today. Amalek is machar, machar, machar. The success that we have on Rosh Hashanah is dependent on one thing. Hayoyim. We know what we need to do. If we commit to do it today, Atem Nitzavim, you want to stand tall? Hayoyim! Then you need to make Rosh Hashanah about now. Not about a different time. Every time Rosh Hashanah appears in Tanakh, it is called Hayoyim. Says Rabbi Gamliel Rabinovich, Atem! Al toyma machar! Don't say tomorrow. Nitzavim, you want to stand tall? And we could say what we just mentioned. Hayoyim, you have to have the attitude that today, and not a different time. Let's take a different approach. It's interesting, we know that Rosh Hashanah is one of the Esar Simei Tshuva, one of the ten days of repentance. The question is, look at the Machzer. It's very big, it's a fat Machzer. You know, the art school Machzer is, I don't know, it's like a thousand pages. And even if you have a, a regular Machzer, it's pretty fat. People, you know, during Musaf, they're counting how many pages are left. Let me tell you what is not in your Rosh Hashanah Machzer. There's no Vidoy. There's no Achet. There's no tshuva. Yeah, tshuva, sfilo, tztaka. So how about do tshuva? How many pages are there in the Rosh Hashanah Machzor that are connected to tshuva? Zero. Except in the Artsko Machzor, they print between Marav and Shachris, you know, like Gemaras, random Gemaras about tshuva. Otherwise, there's nothing in that from Anshe Knesset Zagdoila. But Rosh Hashanah is one of the Asaras you made tshuva. So I have a great idea. I have a chap. I have an einfal. If Rosh Hashanah is one of the Asaras you made, made tshuva, why don't we do tshuva? You ever think about that? Why don't we actually do it? No. In fact, the, Gemara, the Yushalmi says that on Rosh Hashanah, it doesn't say chatas by the carbon. Because we don't talk about chet on Rosh Hashanah. In fact, we don't even... Eat a goizim the night of Rosh Hashanah. How are you supposed to do tshuva if you're so scared of Averas? You're so scared of Averas, you can't even say chet. How are you supposed to do tshuva? Every year, the most common question I get about Rosh Hashanah is my wife wants to make a fish with pistachio notes cooked in. That's like the big shayla chamura, you know? That's the main shayla because people can't put nuts in the food. Are you allowed to cook it? Are you allowed to bake it? Are you allowed to fry it? What kind of nuts? Walnuts, pistachio nuts, hazelnuts. Chas v'sham, to go near nuts on, on Rosh Hashanah. But how are you supposed to do tshuva? I thought it's one of the Nassar made tshuva. Furthermore, the Me'iri writes, there's a very, uh, the Me'iri says in Rosh Hashanah, Dav Tezayin, Afal P, number two, on page four, Afal P, Shabachal Yom, V'yom, Roi La'adam, L'fash Beish, B'masav, Lashuv, Midarkoi, Hara, Mikol Mokoi, B'zman Hazer, Rosh Hashanah, Roi L'hisoyra, B'yoyser. Even though you need to do tshuva at all times, you know what day of the year you need to do tshuva more than any other day? Rosh Hashanah, says the Me'iri. 
The Hamas Rashel Bizman has a son who slackens off in Shuvan Rosh Hashanah. Ain loy chilek b'ashem alekei Yisrael. He's not a member of the faith. So the question is, if you're not a member of the faith, so why don't we try doing tshuva on Rosh Hashanah? It's not in the machzer. No nuts. No alchet. No vidoy. By the way, just a side point, an interesting uh, subject. Are you allowed to cry on Rosh Hashanah? Do you know you're allowed to cry? How could you not cry on Rosh Hashanah? What? The Gura writes... It's forbidden to cry in Rosh Hashanah. The Vilna Goin writes in the Maisa Rav, look at number three. Ein liv gois for Rosh Hashanah. On the four, fifth line. You're not to cry in Rosh Hashanah. Kamavur Ezra. It says, Al Tifku. Ezra say, you're not to cry. Ki chedvas Hashem hu me'uzchem. The joy of Hashem is your strength. <clears throat> On the other hand, the Berhetev quotes Arizal. That the Arizal cried on Rosh Hashanah. Says Arizal, if someone does not cry on these days, Ein nishmasoi toivo shlema. Something wrong with you. Your soul is not good. It's not complete. The Arizal says further, someone who cries on Rosh Hashanah, at that moment it means when Hashemayim they're judging you. If all of a sudden you are overcome with demise, that means at that moment they're judging you. So the big question is a pretty big machlikas. The gross says you're not allowed to, and that reason says if you don't, something wrong with you. Now I mean the gra could argue on that re, but usually the gra, why would the uh, typically the gra tries to uh, agree with that re. The gra usually doesn't argue with that reza. So there's an interesting comment in the writings of Reb Zundel of Salant, the Rebbe of Rebbe Yisrael Salant there. Reb Zundel of Salant says, if you look at number five, Inyan Livko is for Rosh Hashanah, Amar, Kishaholech Me'atzmai B'tfila Mutter. You're not allowed to work yourself up. Okay, it's Musaf time. It's an Asana Toikif. Hinani, now I'm going to get myself to cry. You know, I'm going to psych myself up to cry. You're not allowed to do that. But, if the tears flow on their own, it's permitted. So Rabbi Ruch Moshin writes in his Sefer that this could be a reconciliation between the Gra and Arizal. That it's true. You're not allowed to cry. You're not allowed to work yourself up to tears. But, if you don't cry, Mimela, if tears don't come to you, then you need to examine yourself. Now don't get scared. Some people, they're not that emotional. You know, people get worried about this. If you're not that emotional, emotion means you have the certain recognition that if you would have been an emotional person, you would be able to cry. Don't, don't worry about it. But at least naturally, they're both true. You don't force yourself to cry. But it should come naturally. So here it is. <clears throat> Rosh Hashanah is the first day of the Aser Simei Tshuva. The Mi'iri writes, if you don't do tshuva, ain loy chilek b'leke Yisrael. And we don't do tshuva on Rosh Hashanah. What are we doing on Rosh Hashanah? So let's point out again that we've mentioned that there are many places in Tanakh that Rosh Hashanah is called Hayoim. Iyoiv, vayhi Hayoim. Malachim, vayhi Hayoim. Hayoim, Hayoim, haras o'ilam. It's not just... Today is the birthday of the day. The day that is dubbed Hayoim is Haras Oilam. By the way, how do we end the davening? <laughs> the davening we end, if anybody is not sure what today is, Hayoim Tam Tseinu, Hayoim Tevarcheinu, Hayoim Tegadleinu, Hayoim Tirusheinu Latoiva, Hayoim Tishma, Hayoim, 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 Seven times. Says Rekeach, Biatem, Hadvekim, Bashem, Elokechem, Chayim, Kolchem, Hayoim. Can I get the seven words in the Pasuk? So Rosh Hashanah is called Hayoim, 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 Hayoim. Why is Rosh Hashanah called Hayoim? If I could uh, direct your attention on, your, on page 5 to number 16. <coughs> Rabinu Yoyna. Rabinu Yoyna says, in, the, in a little compendium called Yisoyed HaTshuva. 
Now this is different than Shari Tshuva. In the back of the Shari Tshuva, there's a little kuntris called Yisoy Tshuva. And he says very inspiring words. I just want to read to you a few, uh, a few lines here. Rabbi Nuyoni writes, Odam Asher Pasha V'chata, a person who sinned, U'balachsa Yistachas Kanfa Yishchina, and wants to take refuge under the wings of the Shechina. Askil Chavar Chabadarach Zutelech, I'll tell you what path to take. Bayoimahu, on that day, Yashlich Kol Pshav Asherasa, throw away all your sins. Hey, I like that, sounds easy. Just throw away your sins, you know, like empty out your pockets, just throw them out. Viyasa atzmoi and make yourself kilo hayoyim noyrat as if you were born today. Viyain biyadoy lois chosvoi chayva. You have no mitzvahs. You have no averos. Now I understand why I would want to make myself that I have no averos, but why in the world would I make myself that I have no mitzvahs? No, you have nothing. Vizeh hayoyim tchilas maasav, and I was born today. Hayoyim tefalis archosav. Today I'll straighten my path. And this will bring you to do a wholehearted repentance. So Rabbi Rucham Oshin asks in the Sefer that this paragraph of the Shari Tshuva contradicts the entire Sefer Shari Tshuva. This little paragraph in Yisoy Da Tshuva is, flares up against the entire premise of the Shari Tshuva. You know, we all know that there are ingredients in Tshuva. At the bare minimum, some Rishonim say, you need Vidui, you need Charata, you need Aziva Sachet. Does anybody know how many ingredients the Rambam holds you need? Four. Charata, Vidui, Aziva, Kabbalah Ala Asad. Does anybody know how many ingredients Rabbi Yoyna holds you need? Twenty. That's the first chapter of the first Shara of Shari Tshuva. So you need to have to yoga in, and you need to fix the Avera, Keneged, the infraction, and you need to have Harata, and you need Daiga, and you, you need all kinds of things. And in this chapter of Yisoy Tshuva, you know what Rabbi Yonah says you need to do? You just throw away your sins. And you imagine that you were born today. Wow, throw away my sins. Well, in that case, I could throw away Shari Tshuva. Because I don't need to do 20 ingredients in tshuva if I could just throw away my sins. And this is a question raised by Rabbi Rucham Moshin. And perhaps we could give a very simple answer. And that is, in the Sefer Yisoyed HaTshuva, Rabbi Yoyna is not telling us how to do tshuva. How to do tshuva? You need to do 20 things. The question is, how can you come to doing tshuva? Because I have a problem. You know what my problem is? My problem is I have averos and I feel dirty. And I feel sullied. And I feel far. And I feel unclean. And I feel the Yvonne doesn't want me. And I feel I really don't want to start over. And I really feel I, don't, I can't start over. So Rabbi Yonah says, here's a tachabula. To put yourself in the right mindset, to bring yourself to look into Shari Tshuva, to actually do Tshuva. But before you do Tshuva, you sort of have to have the proper frame of mind. You know what frame of mind is? I'm starting over. It's a new start. I could be old, I could be middle-aged, I could be sluggish, I could not be in the mood, and I could turn it all around. You know why? Because I'm starting on Rosh Hashanah. I'm starting again. I was born today. You know how fresh of a start I have? Not only do I have no Averis, I have no mitzvahs. You could do tshuva this way? No. This doesn't remove your Averis. This allows you to have the frame of mind to embark on a path of tshuva. The Yisoy Da Tshuva writes, the Darach Zu Tevienu Lashuv B'Tshuva. This will bring you to do Tshuva. You know how? Hayoim! I was born today. Everybody, in order to do Tshuva, they need to feel that they're starting again. You know I, what, what Rosh Hashanah is called? Rosh Hashanah is called Hayoim. Do we do tshuva on Rosh Hashanah? We don't do tshuva. We do what's necessary to be able to prepare ourselves to start doing tshuva. 
And what's that? A simple shift of attitude. I begin today. Hayoyim. I was born today. Zeh hayoyim tchilas ma'asav. I have no mitzvahs, I have no averos. What happened to them? It's just an ability that a human being has. The Rebbein Shem gave us the capability to, so to speak, turn... But why, what's today more than any other day? It's the middle of my life. What do you mean I'm starting again? I have the, no, I have the ability. The Rebbein Shem invested within us that every Rosh Hashanah, today begins a new Bria. In fact, in Vayikra Rabbah, it says that by every other carbon of all the Mayadim, it says, Vihikravtem, on Rosh Hashanah, it says, Vahasisem. Why? It says, Ribbansham, on Rosh Hashanah, I imagine it, Ki'ilu, Hayoim, Naasisem, Lafanai. It's like I created you as a Beria Chadasha, the matter says. Rosh Hashanah is called Hayoim because to be, to be successful in Rosh Hashanah, we employ the strategy of Rabbi Yoyna and the Yisoy Shuva. I was born Hayoim. Today's my first day. One more approach. Apisoid. The Gra brings down a custom. You know what you don't eat on Rosh Hashanah? You know what you do eat in Rosh Hashanah? On Rosh Hashanah people eat more fruits than they do the whole year. Some people eat more fruits the night of Rosh Hashanah than they do the whole year. Even though the FDA advises to have like, I don't know, 35 fruits a day or something. Is that or 8 fruits a day? I don't know how that's humanly possible, how you could even fit it in. Where when you s- now the people don't even know what fruits are, but the night of Rosh Hashanah everyone's eating fruits. But there's one fruit the Gras says you're not to eat. You're not to eat grapes. The Gras says. The Master Rav says, don't eat grapes on Rosh Hashanah. Why? I'll peace side. So the Achroinim on the Master Rav try to be Megala. What's the side? Very Pashut. Why do we have Rosh Hashanah? What was the first Yom Adin in history? Who was judged? Adam. Why was Adam judged? He ate from the Yitz Hadas. What was the Yitz Hadas? It was a grape according to the Madrash. So we don't eat grapes on the day that Adam originated ate from the Yitz Hadas. Interesting. You know, there are other things that we do on Rosh Hashanah to be Mesake in the Chet of Adam Arishayin. You know what else we do? What the mitzvah, the Rambam says of Shoifer, there is no mitzvah to blow the Shoifer. The mitzvah is to hear the Shoifer. The Rambam writes in no less than eight places, there's a mitzvah to hear the Shoifer. <clears throat> Why do we have a mitzvah to listen on Rosh Hashanah? Because what was the sin of the eight Hadas? Ki shamata l'koyo ishtecha. Bad move. Adam, you listen to your wife. So to mesakein, the chait of improper listening, on Rosh Hashanah says, Rabbi Shulam, we could know, we have a mitzvah to listen to the sound of the shayfa. I saw an amazing shlach. You know, we eat more fruits on Rosh Hashanah than any other time. Why do we have so many fruits? Could we suggest, perhaps, Rebbe Hashem tells Adam Arishayin, Vayitzav Hashem Lekim Ala Adam, look at number 12 on page, five, on page 7. Vayitzav Hashem Lekim Ala Adam Lemar, Mikal Eitz Hagan Achol Toichel. You can eat all the fruits, but don't eat the Eitz Hadas. So the question the Shlach asks, just say, don't eat the Eitz Hadas. Why does Rebbe Hashem say, eat the other fruits? Says the Shla, he was given an assay and a loisase. An assay to eat the other fruits, a loisase not to eat the Eitz Hadas. Could we say that the minog of eating fruits on Rosh Hashanah is the same way we have to, we don't eat grapes because we can't eat the Eitz Hadas. We have an assay, so to speak. We have a minog, dafko to eat the other fruits, like the Rebbe Hashem told Adam Arishayin. We call Eitz Hagan, achal toicha. So this last soid, I actually uh, was sitting at the Shabbos table last year, Erev Rosh Hashanah, and my daughter said over this Dvar Torah, and I almost fell off my chew. I never heard such a Dvar Torah in my life. It's like Kabbalah. I said, where did you, you get this from? It sounded like, I don't you know, it's at Mamish Ka- My teacher told me, who, from who? I don't know. So I called up her teacher. So where did you get this from? Shvilei Pinchas. <laughs> So I called up the Shvila Pinchas, the Belzer uh, Rosh Kola in Eretz Yisrael. He said, how did you hear this Tvar Torah? I said, my daughter told it to me. He said, when I wrote this Tvar Torah, I didn't even think two people in the world could understand it. 
in my wildest dreams that I think that in the Beis Yaakovs in America, they're going to be saying over this Dvar Torah. So he said, he told me a very important lesson. You know, you never know in life. You think, you do something, you never know who you're going to reach. I'm a, I'm a big Talmud of the Shvila Pinchas. I, I missed over this Dvar This is Mamish Oyem Anoira. The Mikubalim right. This comes from the number 14, the Toysef Chaim. Reb Chaim Yosef, the Abezin of Pashtin, that when Adam Harishan ate from the Eitz Hadas, it was Poigeya, it was Poigeim in the Shem Havaya, Yud Ke Vav Ke, the Vav He became dislodged. After all, we know, the, the Yismach Moshe says, that Yud Ke Vav Ke, Yismachu HaShamayim, V'sagel Aretz. So often, yeah, we believe, we believe in the Shamayim, but the V'sagel Aretz, that if he's down here in this world, you know, Sometimes we don't acknowledge that. So when Adam ate from the Yitzhadas, he was poigame in the Vovke. When Adam ate from the Yitzhadas, he was poigame in the Yud and the Mem of Elikim. Look, some Sofer writes that Elikim is Ela, me. Ela is when we see the Rebbe Hashem clearly. Ela, this is Rebbe Hashem. Me is, where, where's the Rebbe Hashem? In fact, the Chassam Sofer reads into a conversation that Moshe Rabbeinu had with Paroi. Chassam Sofer says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells Moshe to go to Paroi. Paroi says, Mi Hashem! So Moshe said, no, no. Laman Shisei Yosei say, Eila. You want to know where Hashem is? You're, you're being plagued in the Mi? Laman Shisei Yosei say, Eila. Be it as it may, the Mekubalim right? They were not made from the Yitz Hadas. It was Poi game in the last two letters of the Shem Avaya and the last two letters of Elohim. Ah. Comes the Skol Yoreva. And he says, well, that's Pshat. That the Yud Kei Vav Kei was Nifgam. The Elohim was Nifgam. Adam Arisha, when he ate from the Yitz Hadas, he was Poi and these two Shemas of Hashem. Vayishmu as Kol Hashem Elohim. Adam heard that the Hashem Elohim was crying out, what did you do to me? You know why? Because if you take Vav, Hey, Yud, Mem, what, what word do you get? Hayoim! Vayishmu is called Hashem Elohim, is Halik Bagon, Leruach Hayoim! Vayishabe Adam Ibne Hashem Elohim. They hid because of what they did to Hashem Elohim. Because they took the letters out and they created Hayoim. You know what we need to do? When we will bring Mashiach, Ki Lishuascha, Ki Vinu, Kal Hayoim. We're going to bring, be Mashlam the Hayoim. We're going to send the Vav Hay back to the Yud K. We're going to send the Yud Man back to Elah. Ki Hahu Elohimu, Vanachnu Amarisai, Vitsain Yodai. Hayoim in Bekoiloi Tishmo. If we listen to Rebbe Hashem, we'll be mashlim the Hayoim. Rosh Hashanah is the day that Adam Arishain ripped out the Vav K. He ripped out the Yud Mem. And the Avoid of Rosh Hashanah then is Atem Nitzavim Hayoim Kochem. It's to restore the Vav K and to restore the Yud Mem. Says the Shvile Pinchas, an amazing remez. We blow that shoifar. We're trying to be in the chet of Adam Arishain. We blow what? Shvarim. Shever Yud Mem. The Yud Mem was broken. We blow Trua. Tera Vav K. The Vav K was harmed. And by blowing the Trua, by blowing the Shvarim, we restore the Vav K. We restore the, the, yud, K, the, the yud Mem. And the Rosh Hashanah then is the day of Hayoim. And therefore we end our avoida Hayoyim ta'amatseinu, Hayoyim tevarcheinu, Hayoyim tigadleinu, Hayoyim tedrushenu latoiva, Hayoyim tishma shavaseinu. The avoida of Rosh Hashanah, to sum up what we spoke out tonight, the avoida of Rosh Hashanah is number one, we know what to do. It's a matter of Hayoyim, when to do it. The avoid of Rosh Hashanah is we have the capacity to throw away our averos, to say even before we do tshuva, we're able to do tshuva because we could temporarily cleanse ourselves and say today is the first day of our lives. And we're able to be in that original sin, the sin of Adam Arishain, who is poigeya in the Vavke, who is poigeya in the Yud Mem. And if we have a proper Rosh Hashanah, 
we're able to be mashlim these oisios to the Shem Hashem, and we're zoycha ki lishuascha ki vinu kol hayoyim hayoyim im bekoylois sishmo. So thank you so much for listening. I wish everybody a geben shteyar, a ksiv achsima toiva. We should all have shana toiva, masuka shana mevayraches, shana sheyimali Hashem kol mishal seinu letoiva. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.